Our next uh, speaker today is uh, a gentleman by the name of Rob Hope, standing behind us here. He's the man behind the, the websites that I think a lot of you may have seen called One Page Love. Uh, and he's going to be speaking today about, about going niche. It's, a, it's kind of a French word. It means like a little, you know, tell them what niche means. Like, you know what niche means? Uh, it's, uh, when you take something and then you, you make it uh, into a, like a niche. <laughs> That's what it is, isn't it? I got married on them and I thought they would get more of a life as well. That's, that's you, gotta, you gotta find your niche, guys. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. One Page Love is one of the most popular CSS galleries on the internet and it showcases many sites that obviously are uh, one page. So uh, please put your hands together, welcome our next speaker today. He's come all the way from Musenberg, it's quite a long train. <laughs> so he's a little bit he's a little bit jet lagged, I think. A little bit jet lagged. Please welcome Rob Hope. Thank you. Hello everyone. Um, I'm Rob Hope, I'm from the Southern Suburbs as you know. Um, I created a website in 2008 that's got quite a lot of quite a big following right now. And uh, I'm going to talk about how I grew it. So about 10 years ago, um, I started building websites. Six, seven years ago, I got into WordPress, never looked back. Um, and yeah, so my talk overview is just how I first got my, um, in defining a one-page website. Then we'll talk about the initial growth in the beginning. And then we're going to talk about how once you've got the traction, you start capitalizing on that and boosting your traffic, using tools, thinking smarter. And then we're going to talk about monetizing, about building layers, um, not just advertising. And then we're going to talk about traffic retention, keeping that following, being loyal to your, um, your readers. And then I want to talk about targeting niche, quite a difficult question at the end, how do you predict the niche? Um, and I'm going to cover that. So basically to start off, the one page website, it's a niche. Um, a lot of you guys are designers, you know, you build websites for clients. Um, my gallery talks about just one-page websites. What is a one-page website? It's on a domain, it's on its own .com. It doesn't have several pages. Um, it's basically normally like a landing page. It, it aims on a conversion. So it's got relevant information and they want you to act straight away. It can be a portfolio, but for a, a good example, it's basically like a marketing page. Um, we offer this product, click this, this option to buy, or we want you to interact, and it's short and simple. Um, this is not for everyone. For example, SAA, an airline, they're not going to have a one-page website. WooThemes, you're not going to be a very long website. Um, if, if there's commerce involved, it's not generally. Um, a one-page will take you away to your checkout, but it's about your landing page, it's about your conversion. Um, it's growing from strength to strength. Uh, this diagram shows you theme forest top searches from July to August 2013, as you can see here, number five. Um, the one page. Um, theme Forest really has helped the site, helped our site grow. Um, this is Google Trends for term one page websites. As you can see here in 2008, the initial spike, and that's exactly when we started launching the site, and it's grown from strength to strength. And <coughs> it's popular now, but it had to start somewhere. It was a niche. It's, it's, it's kind of gone out of a niche, but when I started, you know, there, there weren't many one page websites. So I'm going to take you right back to 2008, and this is where I launched One Page Love. Um, there was a, a sea of CSS galleries. There was CSS Mania. There was um, Style Boost, Web Cream. You know, the, these guys were providing good inspiration for users. And roughly at the same time, I was building sites for clients, and a client would give me a half a page Word document, and they would say, "Build me a five page website." It didn't make sense. So this kind of sparked up my curiosity for one pages. Um, surely you know you could use that information and just keep it relevant. Um, just give them enough to act on a conversion. And you know, don't spread out the information, don't dilute the information just so I can have a conventional five page website with a contact form on the fifth page. So yeah, today, cross forward to today, I've added 4,400 one pages to our site. Um, all using WordPress, handled really well. And we get about 6,000 visitors a day. And we get roughly about 30 submissions a day um, for the likes of Rookle, 
IGN, uh, Samsung. It's become pretty popular, but it had to start somewhere. Now I'm going to start my first section to talk about the initial growth and how I got those first users to keep coming back. And so, there's a no-brainer, and everyone knows this is build a website. The first step is hard work. You start off, you know, you've got your initial idea. But you're like, how, you know, how am I going to keep adding content? How am I going to keep followers? And what I did, and this is going to probably be laughable right now with the systems and tools we have nowadays, but back in 2008, I couldn't find one page websites. You know, I I was after them. You know, I had a passion for them, but. I would go to all the popular CSS galleries and I would try and find one pages. I would go to every single thumbnail and I'd click the thumbnail and it would open up a new window and I'd see the navigation with the second page. Close the tab. I think there were tabs back then. Um, and I would literally you know, just try and find one pages on the internet. And when I found one, it was like a lottery. Like, yes, I got it. Add it into my WordPress site. And then this is the crazy part is that I would actually mail the owner of that website. And I would go, hey, I featured your website on my website. Um, I took a screenshot. Do you think it gives justice to your website? You know, if not, I'll redo it for you. Um, do these tags, are you happy with these tags? If not, tell me and I'll change it. You know, I did this for the first 500 websites on my site. And what happens is that they, wow, you know, there's a very niche gallery. One pages, obviously they're kind of fashion with one pages because they just built one. And then they go, oh, and you know, they send it out on their social media. And I was literally building and following one user at a time. And a point I want to say that a big point is you've got to understand your users. You know, your users come in there and he wants a one page website. Don't don't create loopholes to get the information. You know, a lot of CSS galleries you'll you'll see is they'll have a thumbnail. And then you have to click the thumbnail to go to a page and then find the link somewhere and they create this maze. We'd have an archive with the image that links straight to information and straight to the straight to the one page. Focus on the experience, make it the best it can be. Um, don't have clutter, don't have ads. So in the beginning, you know, there's there's competition, there's other CSS galleries. And even a differentiator in the beginning is we didn't have adverts, you know, we didn't have I like to call the, the social Christmas tree of just sharing buttons everywhere. You know, our site was just focused on one pages that loaded fast, the images were clear, our thumbnails were slightly bigger than the rest of them, and that already, already created a differentiator compared to other sites. So, in that space where you normally have advertising, you know, focus on bringing the user and keeping them. So, have you follow, like follow us on these social accounts. You know, don't have ads in the beginning. Don't send users away. Get them going. Get them browsing. Get them to know your brand. Um, obviously, layers of social traffic. You got to sign up on Facebook. Got to sign up on Twitter. You slowly do them one at a time. And every time you add a new one, you add them to those channels. And then it's easier for them to actually share. Um, release early. Release often. Obvious. You know, it's a famous saying. But you know, try something. You know, try a new feature, like maybe move your categories to the right column, move them away from the footer, and then if it doesn't work, the stats don't work out, change it. Be proactive. When, when a user comes to a new website for the first time, when they see things are improving all the time, it gives this feeling of, you know, the owner's committed to this. He's actually passionate about this project. And it creates this whole kind of community feel where they want to support you. Um, they will give you feedback if you keep changing. Don't waste their time. They are there for one page websites. Don't, you, you maybe watched the Coney video last year and you thought, wow, oh, the whole world needs to know about this. Don't go share it on your social channels. Keep it to yourself. Don't waste the user's time. He wants one page websites. That is it. He wants to know about this niche, nothing else. And that, in, in the beginning, it got us a following. And now we've got the initial following, and now we to talk about um, boosting that traffic. So you've got your users. They're coming. They're coming back. And how do you work smarter? And this is about building systems, using tools. So an example, I want to talk about is SEO. You know, a lot of you guys have very different opinions on SEO. I personally think that content is better than SEO at the end of the day. But what we did is we used to have tags on every single one page that we added. We'd add a tag blue, 
parallax scrolling, retina optimized, flat design. And what we do is we tweak our header tags so we just add one page websites at the end of each tag. So next thing you know, so they call it in, in SEO is we targeted the long tail. So all of a sudden we've got hundreds of exact keywords that are matching our, our, our sites. And so if someone searches horizontal scroll one page websites and we number one. And we're getting a lot of traffic from this small tweak in SEO. In the submissions, when people, they try and submit their one page results, you know, there's an option. Capture them, get them into the newsletter. Autoresponders, promote your social channels. So someone submits and they say, hey, you know, it would go back to them and go, hey, thanks for submitting your website, Derek. Um, um, it's in our channel, um, it's, in, it's in our um, queue of one pages. Hey, why not follow us on Twitter while you're at it, you know? Get things working behind the scenes. Um, keep trying to think smarter. Keep trying to think passive. You know, right now someone's submitting and I'm promoting something on my site. Roundups and link baits, there's a no-brainer that people love lists. So, you know, we had a lot of one pages. They were already in it, in their categories and they were in their tags. So it's easy enough to just cur curate horizontal scroll one pages. So we'd go in those categories and we'd say, 10 horizontal scrolling one page websites. The top one pages of 2012. A heap of traffic came from these roundups. Curate them, build them. Award banners, which funny enough, it's a quite a term used in CSS galleries, is that if you get featured on a design gallery, you're getting an award. The concept didn't make sense to me in the beginning, because what award? I just featured your website. And Next thing you know, people were, were, were tweeting us and, and, and mailing me and going, can I please have an award banner? Like, Why would you want to put my banner on your website? Why would you want to put my logo? And I listened and I created these banners. And next thing you know, I've got hundreds of links in directly to my website off their portfolios that are, they're prom promoting on different channels. And they don't take these banners away either. So this was such a, a weird, way to get traffic for me, but it's thinking more, more smarter, thinking passive, thinking where links are coming from other places. Uh, <coughs> study your stats, we use the plugin called Search Meter. And for, ex for, example, for example, I could see a couple of null results for the, the tag finance. And, and we had added a bunch of financial one pages, but obviously I didn't think of that as a term at the time. So study your stats, see what people are asking for, Tweet, improve. And then other examples of boosting traffic and thinking smarter. So maybe maybe a good handful of you guys create one page themes. And you go ask yourself, you know, what, what can I do to make things smarter that's gonna improve my life, improve my system? So a rough example, um, I've got a side project called Theme Code where we make minimalistic WordPress themes and, and often a support barriers. I installed the site and it doesn't even look anything like the demo. And you think, well, that's, that's impossible, you know? Like, and what's happened is that they've downloaded our free version and straight into the zip file, they install the thing, press activate, and then they expect the whole site to work. What they haven't done is they haven't even looked at doc the documentation. So in that case, just as a side example, is that maybe exactly when someone clicks download on the free version, maybe it pop-up window comes and says, thank you for downloading Delicious and Simple. Um, here is the exact link to the documentation. So just a side example of just trying to think smarter, trying to improve everything. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna cover a few plugins we use that I wanna promote. Um, a lot of people, a lot of designers don't like this stuff, so you can't style them. Um, we used to have comments and they got a certain amount of traction. And then we move to discuss, which is easy to log in, and it's actually easy to interact. And there's, there's no question that the interaction went up with discuss. So I'm going to give them a shout out. I do think that works. Um, there's obviously other solutions, but that one worked for us. Um, Gravity Forms. Um, a lot of you guys might have heard of them, but for One Page Love, it has, mo has had the most significant impact on our productivity and actually making the site a lot more passive. So back in the day, 
We used to have a form to email. So someone would submit their one-page website, and you would say your name, your email, and you make your one your one page. And what would happen is we'd open it up, we'd look at your one page, and if we liked it, we'd take a screenshot, we'd take a thumbnail, add the tags, add all the right titles and so on, and, and publish it. And what Gravity Forms then <coughs> does, which is so great, is you can actually create a form that goes straight into draft mode in WordPress. And you can populate <coughs> custom fields, make featured images. So all of a sudden, users, we, we, we spend about two hours tweaking this form, making it perfect to fit what our posts look like. And next thing you know, it was saving us so much time. Um, I did a rough working back then at the rate we were adding one pages. Um, because of the two hour change, it, it made a difference of around about 80 hours in a year we saved from adding, just from spending two hours. And that's like this, three days of your life back, just from trying to work smarter and improve your systems using a good plugin. Um, WordPress Ad Manager, I don't know if a lot of you are familiar with it, we bought it on Code Canyon. It's a premium plugin. But what we do is we split test our ads. So we'll have an ad in promoting a certain theme we've got for sale, and then we'll, we'll have a whole bunch of variations, and then the worst ones will knock off, and then we'll try and compete with the best ones. So you're actually just trying to word, change the wording, change the imagery, and that for us, it just has such a beautiful interface on how to see all the different clicks, see your conversion rates, and it really has added value into our advertising model. And lastly, just a shout out to WP Engine. Um, we were on Hostgator, a dedicated server, and we moved to WP Engine. And these guys, they take care of, of things that you just don't want to worry about. You know, they've got a one-click restore. Um, if you get hacked, you don't worry about it. You don't have to have your caching plugins anymore, your security plugins. They take care of most of this. Um, our, our load time of our pages, it decreased. Our bounce rate decreased, and, and resulting, Obviously our traffic increased, and it basically started paying for itself. Um, they've got a really cool cloning tool that I want to mention. Um, we've got 4,400 posts on our WordPress site, and I know you guys use localhost most of the time, but sometimes you want to you want to see what your current content looks like with maybe a site tweak. And in the cloning section, you press clone, you go from site to clone, you go from live to clone, and there's your site within a minute and you can get it on a secret URL, and you can start tweaking. And then you can click, once you're done clicking, and once you're done tweaking, you can go from the cloning site to live within one click. It's really bad, I'd say WP Engine for us really um, increased our traffic big time. And I wouldn't say cut corners there. Okay, so the biggest point I wanna say on, on boosting traffic is you need to understand your user, and you need to keep adding value. So, our user is a designer, or he's a developer, and he wants one-page websites. He wants to know about this one-page website. He wants to know how it's built. You've got to understand who he is. So this is our website about two years ago. How we used to have a screenshot, we used to have a title, category, and a few tags. And this is also a dilemma of us, because we were getting no, people weren't clicking deeper than the archives. So you click a screenshot and it will go out. It's perfect for what, you know, what we thought people wanted, and people were happy. But we wanted more. We were thinking, wow, you know, maybe if we added more value, we can get more traffic and more a bigger following. So what we did was thinking, what's the first thing we can do to maybe add a little bit more value to a one-page listing? You know, right now you think to yourself, what do you think? And the first thing we did was we made a bigger screenshot. So our archive stayed the same, but now you could actually click a page deep to see the big screenshot of the one page. And sometimes the screenshot's very long. But what this did is that maybe some people were on slow connections and they just wanted to see the image. And immediately people were clicking a page, the traffic went up, impressions went up, um, and people were commenting. They were back, I really, really appreciate this new feature. You'd be surprised the community of people when you start changing and tweaking, they can see you proactive. So then already this has increased traffic. So you say to yourself, how am I going to do more then? And you ask yourself right now, like I don't know if you're thinking in your heads, wow, what can we do to improve a one-page website review? And it's obvious, I just said it. You add a review. It takes longer, but the value added to this actual post on a website is 
significantly bigger. Um, people would, would now go in the archives, they would have a micro review next to each thing. So they didn't have to just see a pretty thumbnail and click out. They could actually see our review. And I, I would say, maybe the parallax is a little bit harsh in this, uh, as you scroll, but you know, I really like that feature where there was a, a hidden Easter egg in the footer. You know, like I picked that up and then people are like, wow, man, he's really adding value to this. So you keep going and you just don't stop. And what we did is people would go, you know what, really be cool. How about if we found out a little bit more about how the website was built? You know, fair enough, you got a review, but what obstacles did, did they have? You know, you know, maybe it was cross-browser issues. I'm, I'm building a similar landing page, and I want to know what, you know, I'm using those fonts, and maybe that clashed with something. So what we do now is in our gravity forms, we add another field, and we say, please tell the, our users about the obstacles you have. And people love talking about their build. And all of a sudden, this is what, this is what so much value for one page. It's like you've got a massive screenshot, our review, their notes, and then this is an interesting feature as well. And this, I learned this from my other side project, Minimal, where we blog about minimalism. We recently redesigned and we took away our arrows and page impressions dropped. We added them back, went straight up. So I thought, wow, they just use them here. And I'm finding now, when you're looking at our analytics, Guys are arriving on our site, clicking in a review, and they're going 30 to 50 pages deep just using these, just using these arrows. And what's, well not displayed here, but we've got our ad impressions at the top, we're promoting our themes, we're promoting our channels, and then obviously a big launch, a launch link. So yeah, my biggest point with boosting traffic is you've got to understand who your user is. What does he want? You know? This is this is pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this is what he wants, but I'm pretty sure we can keep improving if we keep trying to understand the user further. So, once you've got your following, you've boosted your traffic, you've got a really good um, you've got a really good um, understanding of the user. Now it's the time to monetize. Um, is Mike good? Okay. So this is, a, this is back to my first point about you know, when you're getting that initial growth. You know, people think, wow, man, you know, I've got 50 users that arrived yesterday. I should totally put on a headsense. It, it's, it's ugly, and it's actually ruining your user experience. So when is the right time? I don't have the golden answer, but in my personal opinion, it's when you've got daily followers. You definitely have a following, they're returning. It's because your content's good. You're providing a good, inspiration for them online. But also your content now is at a point where it's slightly more valuable than similar sites. So in CSS galleries, there's lots of them. They have lots of traffic. But now, you know, we have user review. We have we have reviews on one pages. We have build notes. You know, we, we have big beautiful screenshots and good tags. We've got search, you know, like our content is now valuable. So I think it's now we can slowly start to ease in our monetization strategy while keeping usability in, in mind. So don't go slap in a massive skyscraper ad. You know, slowly start to infiltrate, see what's working. Don't ruin the usability of the user. You know, he's happy clicking through one pages and screenshots. Don't make him scroll to see them. Don't make him find, don't create loopholes. Back to the first point. And Think of Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. When those guys started, they provided a good service online. And then once they got their following to that point where they knew they had returning visitors that were not gonna leave them, they staffed on some ads. I think um, Instagram just got its first ad the other day. Obviously Facebook's a bit of a mess in the column and YouTube's obviously got video ads now. But those guys didn't start with advertising. They started focusing on usability and they got their users happy and returning, and then they monetized. Um, John and Nolan, who's the ghost founder, um, a few guys might know, he, he says, if your monetization strategy is advertising, you need to be marketing to an enormous audience. If you're not selling something, you better have a lot of eyeballs. Collis, who owns Steam Forest, I'm sure a lot of you guys would know, um, referral programs are your friend. Trade upfront ad costs for pay on conversion to an army of DIY marketers. So what I'm saying here is that the first thing you, so now you have impressions, you know, you have tons of impressions, so you're thinking advertising, it's not the only way. Um, these guys who have their own, 
these, these DIY marketers are specialists in converting. You send them the users, they do the rest. You know, they sign up for their free trial and they are pros. They've split tested the thing to death. They they have follow-up emails and they reward you heavily. You know, I'm going to talk about the levels now, but for example, Squarespace, you send users to Squarespace website builder, they sign up for a free trial, and if they convert into a premium package of $10 a month, Squarespace will give you $100 because their cancellation rate is so low that, and they, they do such a good job and they provide such a good service. So you've got to trust them. And, you, and they reward you heavily. So advertising, it's definitely not the only way. So I'm just gonna give you some insight on how we monetize one page love. Um, I like to think of it as building layers. We've got a whole bunch of different things you can do on our site, and each one of them give us a reward. Yes, we have advertising, um, but it's very small and it's kind of unobtrusive. Um, we review one page themes. You know, it's obvious. Theme Forest is a bunch of one-page themes. You come in for one-page inspiration, and Theme Forest give us 30% back of any deposit that any user puts in. So if someone arrives at our site and goes to the template section, and the template is $9, they go over to Theme Forest, they have to register for account, and the way it works there is, if they deposit $100, we get $30. We get 30% of any deposit, because that deposit is non-refundable. Okay, we promote Squarespace, like I was saying. We get $100 per conversion. We promote WordPress hosting on the footer. We use WP Engine. They give you $150 per sign up. Um, bundle deals. Um, I personally don't like them, but if you keep it relevant, Mighty Deals just had a bundle the other day that said 21 page templates for $20. And then we get back 25, so we've reviewed that. Um, and that kept going, you know, that bundle didn't go away and it kept earning us money. Promote WordPress management, manage WP, we promote them as well. Every time someone signs up, we get 30% recurring uh, forever, as long as they are a customer with them. And this is what I'm talking about building layers, is that even if you've got three of those, five of those, one of those every month, it really adds up. And we haven't even started to talk about advertising yet. And then it was obvious, we've got the audience, up. I love WordPress. I started building one page themes and we get 100% of the earnings for that. We, we integrate with PayPal directly buy it for our site and it's a good way to earn. Um, advertising, we use, um, like Rian was saying, I think he was using a network. Um, we use Carbon Ads and they pay us for impression. Um, other methods, sell an ebook, sponsor RSS feed, same thing, sponsor blog posts. Um, we don't use these things, sponsor your newsletter, um, start an Amazon A store. Um, if it's relevant to your content, um, I do it. So my big point here is you need to understand the user and keep it relevant and that equals conversions. So I'm going to use a complete non-tech example, but you have a blog on roses and you talk about gardening techniques or so on. Create an ebook and sell it. You know, it becomes passive income. Sponsor the RSS feed, maybe Net Florist um, wants to sponsor, and they have an affiliate program. Um, start a newsletter, promote Net Florist as well. An Amazon A store, you may be selling gardening tools, gloves, whatever, job boards, um, gardening service. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but these are different ways that you can monetize when it's, it's not advertising related, and these are relevant to your user. You understand them, and this is how you get conversions. Don't promote anything that's not related to your website. Um, traffic retention, once you've got your traffic, you've monetized how you keep them. Be transparent, be human, um, be honest. Tell people you made a mistake, remove a feature. Um, be consistent and back yourself. I know we recently got a submission from Samsung, and it was a beautiful long page, and it was parallax scrolling, and the colors were incredible. And it, but it had a huge header that linked to the rest of Samsung.com. And I remember, I actually, because we don't often get submissions from such big companies like that, and I mailed them back saying, this is beautiful, but it's not one page. I, I can't miss this. And then we went back and forward. And he's like, how, how can this not be a one pager? Back to self. It's not a one page website. I, if, they, if, they, if we featured it, they probably would have shared it to their, their whole you know, social networks and we got featured, whatever, but then all of a sudden you open Pandora's box. You, know, you water down your consistency 
and that's what you've got your following from in the beginning. Forget about copycats, you've had full clones of one page love. Take that energy, that negative energy, and just keep adding value. It, it always has a better result at the end of the day. Keep improving, keep tweaking. Give them a reason to come back. At the end of the day, a user wants one page website. So what do you do to, to make them come back? Keep improving, keep adding fresh ones. Interview designers that have built one page websites. Keep thinking of what the user wants. Put yourself in their shoes. Um, this is a question I get asked a lot and they say, okay, that's all very well, you got lucky, one page became trendy. You know, how can I start a niche tomorrow? And you know, how do I know it's gonna be popular? How do you predict the viability of a niche? And it's a very difficult question. But if someone had to ask me that back then, when we started it, I was passionate about one pages. I, I, I had an itch that I wanted to scratch and I, I was finding them, I was, I was passionate about it. But if I had to ask you, you to think outside of your industry, so think beyond one pages, think about what the world's doing. And I would say Ajax was becoming more popular. Mobile was becoming more popular. Um, AdWords started in 2005, you know, we launched in 2008, and Google was promoting AdWords heavily by then, and it just made so much sense that a one-page website is just what they want, you know? It's, it was getting promoted more, they want conversion. Relative information, form, let's convert. One page is becoming, and then minimalism, people wanted things simple, and they didn't want all this clutter, they didn't want five-page websites with half-page worth of content. Um, lastly, I just wanna talk about there's nothing more important than actually going out and doing this. You can say, oh, I've got this cool idea, and I'm going to ship. Um, align your niche with your passion. You know, I was passionate about one pages. What this does is it allows you to get through the dip, as they call it. Um, it'll allow you to push through um, the rut. So, yes, when you launch, like the site launched the other day was called Buzzy Snazzy Maps, I saw it the other day. It was the most niche site I'd seen in ages. This guy had an inspiration gallery for color schemes of Google Maps. And I was thinking, wow, and it gets this initial um, spike. People are like, wow, this is a cool idea. And then you get the rut off this. One page is the same, you know? Wow, this is amazing, the first time. And you can slow down. The only thing that's gonna get you through that is your passion. So yeah, go out there. What inspiration are you lacking? What out there is you can't find. I couldn't find one page websites. What's frustrating you? Wow, go out and just start a WordPress blog. It's, it'll take you a day and you'll have a website. So yeah, one of my favorite entrepreneurs, Derek Sivers, he says, to me, ideas are worth nothing unless executed. They're just a multiplier. Execution is worth millions. So exactly what I'm saying, start small, think big, but more importantly, ship. So go out, you know, see what's frustrating you, stay loyal, Work hard, you know, next thing you know, 4,001 pages later, you quit your job. You're working on this every day. You get thousands of visitors that have actually formed into a community. You've got a truck, and it's all from just starting with the first one pages in 2005 years ago. So yeah, thank you. Um, go find your niche. Thank you all. We may have time for one or two questions. Most? Any questions for Rob? Oh. So why don't we have great? Um, I'm going to share the slides. Yes. Um, I'll actually try and put them on in the next hour. Oh, there's another question at the back there. No? That's all I have. There we go. There we go. Uh, I had a little question about the uh, one page. Uh, how do you uh, handle the parallels in it? The parallax? Yeah, parallax. In a one page website? Yeah. Um, yeah, so when you scroll down, different elements you know, move slower than the ones behind them, and it creates this kind of no. matrixy effect. Is, no, that, is that what you're asking? No, it's not that the parallax effect, but more the links in the post where the post go, where the post go into. So um, parallax. Permalinks, I thought. Oh, permalinks. Yeah. Those. How okay, you not parallax. I um, <laughs> so yeah, the permalinks. You gotta have anchor links in your in your page. So sometimes you have a little, you know, little hashtag, 
and you have IDs within your headings or so on, and it smooth scrolls down or sideways. There's lots of ways to do it. A lot of times, sometimes you can load within Ajax. It can bring up the content. But yeah, there's, there's, if you browse the site, too, there's, there's some, if you look under our tag unique, you can see some really interesting ways our guys are bringing content into a page. Cool, thanks very much. One, okay, one more question. <laughs> um, I have a side project called Theme Cobra, and they're not one page websites. Um, and we sell our themes on Theme for us. Thank you. Cool, thanks very much. Is there any more? One more? You said uh, a lot of your uh, one page websites are powered by WordPress. Yes. Which is a content management system. Why are you using WordPress for one page websites? It's a good question. Um, and it's become a lot more popular. You know, the with WordPress, you can actually set it up within you know two minutes. You know, a lot of hosting providers have a two-click um, solution. So straight up, you have a pretty powerful you know backend. And if you've integrated right to the right custom fields, um, for example, a theme we've done is you know with the actual framework in place, it's very easy to just say well, I want um, a section to upload a logo. I want it's very minimalistic, but it's a framework that's secure. And you know, there's other plugins you can use. You know, so they, you've got your all-in-one SEO pack. You've got your, you know, caching plugins. That's all stuff you plug into WordPress, and it's taken care of. But that's stuff that you're not going to add if you've got your HTML one-page website. Then you're not actually using the cross post type, or you're calling it by um, objects. There's some there's some clever ways of doing it. Um, but yes, you know, ideally a blog is not a one-page website unless the blogs are loaded in Ajax. So yes, um, you can actually pull different pages in WordPress within one page. And that's what a lot of people are doing. Cool, thanks guys. If you've got any more questions, please hit up Rob on Twitter there, at Rob underscore home. Uh, check out his, his URLs over there. Nick, there was an interesting comment. Um, he was talking about a, quite a robust backend. You've got a, quite a robust backend, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> what am I meant to say? It's a simple yes or no question. Yes. Do you have a quote? You heard it here first? <laughs> 